All right, hey everyone, so today I'm going to talk a bit about eukaryotic transcription in the form of this question. And this question is uh, obviously an MCAT question, but even if you're not taking the MCAT, I think it's a really great way to review transcription overall. So it says, the process of eukaryotic transcription is shown to the left. What part of the RNA is highlighted in the figure? So this is the part I'm referring to. This highlighted portion right here um, is what I'm talking about. Um, and the answer choices are, is this portion the 3' end of the mRNA? Is it the 5' end of the mRNA? Is it the poly-A tail of the mRNA? Is it the cap of the mRNA? Or can it not be determined? Um, so before we even get into this, it's important to go over some basics about transcription. So let me make sure we talk about those, okay? Because transcription is basically mRNA that is produced from DNA. Right, so I didn't draw this in the orthodox way because my arrow is pointing to the left, but transcription is basically referring to the fact of DNA going to mRNA. And in the process, this, this entire process is done by an enzyme called RNA polymerase. So RNA polymerase catalyzes this DNA to mRNA um, transcription. It was actually the subject of multiple Nobel Prizes. Um, the most recent one was actually in 2006. Um, and so you can tell that this enzyme is insane. It's also a big area of study for a lot of important individuals. Okay. Uh, and so now let's go straight into the ex actual steps of transcription. Okay. And that's, that's relayed here by the, the left half. So there are three main parts of transcription. You'll see here, the first part is called initiation, which is the RNA polymerase uh, binding to the promoter right here. You'll see right here, the RNA polymerase, which I'm going to abbreviate RNAP plus promoter. Okay, and then the second step is elongation, which now that the RNA polymerase is bound to the promoter, it's going to go ahead and start transcribing the mRNA. And last but not least, you have termination, where the transcription is complete and you have a complete mRNA transcript, which can then turn into protein. But there's one thing that's imperative that we forgot to mention earlier. And the thing that we forgot to mention earlier is this question is specifically looking at eukaryotic transcription, right? Eukaryotic. And eukaryotes have this thing called post-transcriptional processing, which is described by the right-hand corner, I mean the right corner of the screen right now. Uh, post-transcriptional pro processing happens in eukaryotes. So before we actually turn this RNA into protein, you'll see that the RNA will first go through this process of pro-transcriptional processing. And what happens in the post-transcriptional processing? Well, the, the initial RNA transcript we have will we'll obviously have a promoter. It'll have introns and exons in a eukaryote. And remember, those exons are going to be kept in and the introns are, will be spliced out. So, you know, in post-transcriptional processing, the introns spliced out. And another thing that will happen is that you will get a 5' prime cap added onto the RNA for stability purposes, and you also get a 3' prime poly A tail added on. But let's notice that this is happening after transcription. This is happening post-transcriptionally. You see this post? That post-transcriptionally uh, is what's happening. So this addition of the 5' prime cap and 3' prime poly tail does not actually happen during transcription. So with that, if we go back to the question, um, we can eliminate some wrong answers because we initially want to know what this part is, right? This part that's highlighted, we want to know what that is. But right now, we can see that the process of eukaryotic transcription is shown to the left, not the process of eukaryotic post-transcriptional uh, modification. And because it's transcription, this part cannot be, it can't be the poly A tail. And it also cannot be the 5 prime, uh, or I mean, the other. it also cannot be the, um, the cap, right? The only reason I said 5 prime was because the cap tends to be found on the 5 prime end and the poly A tail tends to be found on the 3 prime end. If you just go back here, um, you'll see that. See the 3 prime poly A tail and the 5 prime cap. But regardless, the answer here cannot obviously be the poly A tail or the cap because we're talking about transcription, not post-transcriptional. All right. 
So with that, let's move on to the next uh, thing, which is a bit about RNA polymerase. So we talked a bit about transcription, which consists of three phases, um, initiation, elongation, and termination. But we have not yet talked about the process, the enzyme that's running the show, which is RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase is crazy, okay? And I'm going to tell you why it's crazy. Um, eukaryotes... have many RNA polymerases, okay? So some RNA polymerases will transcribe, I don't know, rRNA, some RNA polymerases will transcribe mRNA, some RNA polymerases will transcribe tRNA. There's a lot of RNA polymerases in eukaryotes. But all RNA polymerases, all, including prokaryotic and eukaryotic, all, all, all RNA polymerases have this two main things. They have a helicase activity. And what that means is this RNA polymerase can unwind double-stranded DNA. All right. If you think about DNA replication, DNA polymerase does not actually have any helicase activity. The helicase enzyme actually causes that to happen. But in RNA polymerase, the RNA... Uh, it's the RNA polymerase itself will unwind the DNA and uh, not need a separate helicase enzyme. Another thing about RNA polymerase, it also has polymerase activity. Okay, but the cool part about this polymerase activity is that it is de novo. What do I mean by that? De novo means that it does not need a primer to start synthesis. You'll see that this RNA polymerase in this drawing right here is transcribing the RNA, but it does not have any primer. So that's one thing that separates RNA polymerase from the rest. And the last thing I'm going to add is that all polymerases, any polymerase you ever have, will always go from 5 prime to 3 prime. Okay, will always go from 5 prime to 3 prime. And this might be slightly confusing for you, so let me show you in a picture what I mean by that. This is RNA polymerase here, so I'm going to use orange now since the RNA polymerase is already green. This is RNA polymerase, okay? I'm, it's, already, it's already labeled, but I just want to show you. And you'll see that the RNA polymerase is going 5' prime to 3'. prime. So that means that it will start transcribing in such a manner that this is the 5' prime end, and it'll keep adding things on to this part, which is the 3' prime end, okay? So with respect to the RNA strand, the RNA polymerase is always going to go 5' prime to 3', prime, okay? And that's something you always will remember. Any polymerase, any, this is like one of the few things in biology that are absolute, any polymerase will always go 5' prime to 3', prime, okay? With respect to the strand that it's transcribing. So with that being said, Let's go straight into this question. Remember, we ruled out C already. We ruled out D already. But can we figure out what the answer is? And the answer is already written on here because this is a modified image. Okay? But the polymerase is moving this way, right? And because the polymerase is moving this way, we can assume that it's going 5' prime to 3' prime this way. And if it's going 5' prime to 3' prime this way, this has to be the 3' prime end because it adds things onto the 3' prime end. But this right here, the part that was highlighted, has to be 5 prime, okay? And therefore, the part that's highlighted is the 5 prime end of the figure, and the answer is B. So it can't be A, and you can actually determine it because we know that the directional movement is 5 prime to 3 prime. All right, that's today's question. Uh, please subscribe if you find this helpful. I'll be making a lot more of them in the future. If you have questions for these, uh, let me know, and I can try to answer any specific questions about transcription or any other biological phenomenon. But other than that, see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.